Ich bin hier in Fremantle im Westen Australiens, wo ich gleich Alison Dawn treffen werde. Alison arbeitet für die NGO Tangaroa Blue, eine Organisation, die sich gegen die Plastikverschmutzung in Australien einsetzt. I'm here in uh, Fremantle, Western Australia, together with Alison, who works for Tangaroa Blue, an uh, NGO. Hi, Alison. Hello. Can you just maybe shortly explain us what is Tangaroa Blue all about? Yes, uh, Tangaroa Blue Foundation is a marine conservation organisation and we focus on marine debris, so cleaning up beaches and recording what we find and developing source reduction plans to ultimately uh, remove the threat of rubbish entering the ocean in the first place. So we're trying to work out where is the rubbish coming from? Is it coming from people going and leaving things at the beach when they go and have a picnic or is it coming from people fishing? If it's fishing, is it commercial or is it recreational? Um, is it coming from shipping? You know, because even though ships are not allowed to, it's not legal to dump rubbish at sea anymore, a lot of them still do it. Do you often find animals at the beach who died due to the cause of plastic or...? Uh, thankfully, I don't often find them, but certainly we have plenty of statistics. The most common ways, I guess, of um, an animal being impacted by marine debris would be through um, entanglement. So we see awful, um, you know, awful situations where birds and dolphins um, are caught up in fishing line. They might have hooks in their wings or, you know, in their jaws or wrapping around fins, that sort of thing. Um, fishing net is a huge problem, animals get entangled. It's a dead seabird that's got lots of different pieces of plastic inside it, you know, it might have a, a lid, it might have a cigarette lighter, uh, you know, animals don't distinguish between something that's plastic and man-made and something that's food and of course what happens is that you know they eat it and they get full um, and they they think they're eating food and so they when they're feeling full they they stop actually eating actual food and then they're feeding this, this to their babies as well um, and of course they're not eating food so they die from starvation even though they think they're full. When we arrived here in Fremantle, we already spotted in the river some plastic. What, mm. what do you say about that? Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it is a really big problem. Littering is a, a big problem here. Kids are educated in primary school about litter. We've got lots of education programs about the importance of not littering, um, but somehow, Somewhere down the track, that message seems to get lost as they as they get older. Not everybody, but clearly, there's a lot of people still littering. And you can have a rubbish bin right there, and there can be litter right next to it. I don't I don't know. Behaviour change is one of the the biggest sustainability issues that there is. Nachdem wir hier in Fremantle angekommen sind, mussten wir schon leider feststellen, dass wir Plastik gefunden haben am Flussbett hier am Swan River. Das zeigt uns, dass die ganze Plastikproblematik nicht nur draußen in den Meeren stattfindet, sondern dass wir sie hier auch auf dem Lande vorfinden. Auch hier in Fremantle am Flussufer des Swan Rivers haben wir wieder etlichen Plastik gefunden. Es scheint also ein globales Problem zu sein. Schwau, wie sieht die Situation in Südamerika und Brasilien aus und was siehst du für ein Fazit von unserer Expedition? Sim, no Brasil como em toda a América do Sul, existe o problema da contaminação dos rios, das praias pelo plástico. As pessoas, elas devem para solucionar esse problema, mudar o seu consumo, repensar a forma como ela interage com o planeta, reciclar o seu lixo, reaproveitar os materiais. A indústria ela deve pensar suas externalidades e o impacto que a produção dos seus uh, produtos e derivados causa no meio ambiente. A humanidade já ultrapassou os limites do planeta Terra. O planeta Terra ele abriga todas as formas de vida e devemos viver em harmonia com tudo isso e não criar essa sociedade de consumo do descartável, 
onde os valores também estão sendo descartáveis. Temos que repensar a forma como nos relacionamos com o planeta e com as demais pessoas. Uh, temos apenas um planeta e ele não é descartável.